Welcome back savages to another video. So in today's video we're going to be looking at a crypto project which claims to be the world's first deep in meme coin called Entropy. So this is their main landing page and at the top there's two buttons. The one that's enabled is this one called Mine which takes you to their Discord. You need to be on their Discord to be able to participate in this project. There's also going to be a claim button which isn't quite enabled just yet. So the main part of this project is very tongue in cheek. As you can see it says here ambiguous utility. Um, no founder allocation, no airdrops. So in terms of tokenomics, you do actually mine this meme coin using your own hardware, and I'll come on to that shortly. But it does have a one-year halving schedule, and there's a 55.5 billion maximum supply. So we're just on their main documentation pages right here. In terms of the introduction, uh, it just mentions that it's a Web3 project, and you need to bring your own board. So in terms of the boards, what they suggest is using an ESP32 or an ESP32-S board. I'll leave a link in the description where you can buy these boards. It is recommended that you use the ESP32-S. And the beauty of these ESP32s is that they're USB powered, so they're ultra low power. So it's essentially you're going to have to just set it and forget it, which is what I like about these types of projects. How it works. Yep, there you go. Token rewards. And there's a little bit of info about how to claim the token. Something about the security model. Relationship to the value. Little bit of info on the tokenomics. It does say that miners must claim tokens within seven days. Anything left unclaimed will be automatically burned. So just take that into consideration when you're joining this and make sure you claim. So on the Get Started page, as you can see it, that's the link to the Discord. So you need to be joining that. In order to mine with your own device, you need to have what's called a miner role. And the way you get that miner role is you need to contribute to the Discord, post links, put things on Twitter and other social media put suggestions on there and eventually you'll get voted in into a minor role. Once you've got that, then you're good to go. So once you've got that minor role, you'll end up in a section called Miners right here under the pure deep in section of their Discord. So once you've got that mining role, there's a document you can fill in on their website where you need to provide a Solana address and then you open up a ticket with them where they'll provide you a binary to be flashed onto your ESP32 or ESP32 S3 device. So here we are, we're going to go ahead and actually do this on a device I've got right now. And there's four ways you can do it depending on the operating system you've got. If you've got Mac OS, you can click on that link, Linux, Windows, or you can actually do it through a browser. So we're going to do it through a browser. And the prerequisites are you need a web browser, a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, Android or iOS to connect to it. So step number one, to download your firmware. So again, like I mentioned, you need to open up a support ticket once you've sent them your Solana address and completed the documentation. They'll then provide you with a .bin file. Step number two, connect a computer. So for this, you just need a USB cable that connects from the USB of your computer to the board. Now the board itself, these ESP32s, usually have two USB connections on there. The board I'm using has got the very latest USB-C and it's got two of them on there and you can just go ahead and connect to either one of those. So step number four says connect to the serial port. Now you might need to install a driver, if so there's some instructions right here, but once you've done that you just need to go under program and click connect and leave the board rate set to that number there. So here we are, we're on the ESP tool via a web browser. On the program section right here change the board rate to that one and click on connect. Now. I'm just going to give you a tip here. Originally, I could not see this USB single serial port right here. And the reason for that is it just didn't like one of the ports on the board. So if you find that you're not seeing a USB port right here, just try and use the other port on the board. Once you've done that, click on it and do connect. So there we go. We're connected to the device right here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to step number five, which is erase the flash. So you go under program and click on erase flash. So under program, erase flash. And it just comes up in the console, erase and flash. This may take a while. Uh, there we go. Chip erase complete successfully in 27 seconds. Back to the instructions. 
And the next thing we do is going to flash the device. We're going to set the address for the flash from that to that. So the next bit is where you need to choose the file and select that firmware bin file, which will be provided to you from the Discord support. So make sure you go ahead and do that and download it. So on the flash address, here we are. We're just going to change this from this one, change that one to a zero. Going to choose my file. Okay, so that's my bin file added right there. And the next step is we just click on program. So once it gets to the end where it says leaving dot dot dot, just scroll a little bit back up and click on disconnect. Step number seven, we're just going to verify that everything works. So what we need to do is on the console bit, make sure the baud rate is set to that. Click on start, pick the USB single serial again and click on connect. You're just going to get a blank page like that. And then all we do is click reset. And if you get something that looks like this, then it looks like everything's working. So that's all you need to do through the web browser. The next section is going to be done through a mobile phone. So let's skip to that. So step number eight, this is where you're going to be downloading an ESP Wi-Fi config app to your mobile phone from your app store. So if you've got Android, it's going to be this one here, ESP config. If it's iOS, it's going to be Smart Connect for ESP. So go ahead and install that on your phone. So here we are. That's the actual ESP32 S3 board I've got right there connected to the USB-C. Here's a phone. I've just installed the app on there and we're just going to click on Let's Start. So what you need to do once it's opened up is just click that spot and add some credentials. So all you need to do is choose the correct Wi-Fi and then just enter the password. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. So once you're in the app and you've entered your credentials for the Wi-Fi hotspot, go ahead and click that spot and it should hopefully connect to it. Now, if you've got it connected still to the USB, you should be able to go to the actual console and see what it's doing. To quote Conor McGregor, here's a tip for you. If it fails to connect to the Wi-Fi and you want to try a different Wi-Fi, you can't just pick another Wi-Fi connection from the phone app because it won't work. You have to reflash the board again from scratch and then try again with a blank password. So I'm all connected. I'm just going to show you the console right now. So here we are back on the console and as you can see, it's connected fine to Wi-Fi. So that's good. And finally, we've got this last line which says generating entropy. Patience is advised. So there you go, savages. That's all there is to setting up entropy. You can now disconnect it from this console and your PC and just put it in any USB port anywhere else you want and just run it standalone. Basically set it and forget it. So just one final word on claims again. As mentioned earlier on, this claims button isn't active just yet, but I am told it's coming soon. So very much at the moment, when you connect these devices up, you're very much in the build stage. So there you go, savages. That's how you set up entropy on one of these ESP32 S3 devices. I'll leave a link in the description where you can buy this device. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you savages on the next one.